Tēnā koutou. My name's Alex. I work as an addiction counsellor in Auckland. I have been admitted to mental health hospitals and I have worked with people under compulsory care, but I have not been under the Mental Health Act myself. Ko Gina Jorani tōku ingoa, he uri ahau no Ngāti Parau, me Koti Rana, me Ingarani, no Tamaki Makaurau ahau, kei wai tākari ahau e noho ana. Uh, my name is Gina, uh, I'm a health promoter and I live in West Auckland. Kia ora, my name is Megan and today I'd like to share my perspective as someone with lived experience of mental distress but also as someone who has supported friends and family through their hardest days of their own mental health journeys. Kia ora, uh, ko Jodi Toku um, I haven't been placed under the Act myself, but I have supported people who have been placed under the Act. And what I know is this, that every individual has the right to informed consent. Hello, my name is Ivan Yo, and I'm someone with lived experience of mental distress. And what I'd like to share today with you is my hope for a new system that will work for everyone. Kia ora, ko Ali Tokoringua. Hello, my name is Ali. Whilst I myself have not been under the act, I come to this with Fano in mind. Ki te whakatau i e koutou, ko Tami Allen, ko ko ingoa, ko o te kaitiaki matua o i Changing Minds. My name's Tami Allen, and I'm the kaitiaki at the moment of Changing Minds. Aha koa i hara i a Aotearoa toko whakapapa, i kore taku a aroha ki te whenua, mena tangata katoa i mimiti. Although I wasn't born here, Aotearoa is my home and I care very deeply about people and the processes that make us safe here. I have been part of the Mental Health Act in my past and I know the damage it can do both as someone with lived experience and as a family member of someone with lived experience. What things leading up to being placed under the Act do you think would have prevented getting to this point? If I was to look back on the moments leading up to me being placed under the Act, I think there was definitely an increase of fear, panic, um, inability to be able to make good and conscious decisions um, and a loss of hope. So what I needed in those times was the opposite, someone to hold that hope for me, someone that I know that could navigate the system with me, someone to walk alongside me and not make the decisions for me, but help me understand the decisions so that I could make them myself. I don't know whether I believe in a capacity test in a sense that Immediately before and immediately after our most acute moments, I think we have the capacity to make good choices. And only that we need support to make those good choices from those we love and trust. I think advanced directives should be made mandatory. If we're entering the mental health system or the wellbeing system in any capacity, I think the first thing we need to do is sit down with the people we trust and our responsible clinicians and actually um, think about what it is that we would need in those periods if we became really unwell. Um, when I was 19 years old, I was put under the Mental Health Act a few times. Um, it was a pretty scary experience. Um, yeah, like just imagine being 19, young, female, um, having some family difficulties and having all of your rights, your freedom to move around completely taken away from you. Um, it was pretty scary and I couldn't concentrate because I was really distressed um, and it was really hard for me to understand what was happening to me. I was being served with paperwork and I couldn't read it, couldn't understand it. Being placed under the Act is terrifying um, for a lot of people, especially when they feel that their rights are being taken away from them. 
When I was placed under the Act, I didn't understand what was going on, only that I thought that I was a voluntary patient up until the moment that I wanted to leave and then I was placed under the Act. I think that that kind of coercion uh, only increased my fear at the time, whereas what I really needed at that time was more time to sit down and talk to someone and understand what my options were. In my experience, the current Mental Health Act prevents or delays people from seeking help and support for their well-being. There is a fear that asking for help means having your rights taken away, that you will be forced into a situation where you are alone and have no power. The fear of losing your autonomy can mean seeking specialist care or medication if that's what's right for you, only creates more anxiety and stress. The key issues with the Mental Health Act for me are that it breaches people's human rights, rights to freedom, expression and movement. Also it goes against the recovery model. People under a compulsory treatment order lose their right to informed consent. This compromises the clinician's values. Uh, the main, one of the main purposes of the Mental Health Act is used to enforce people taking their medication. There are other ways to support people to take their medication. That's not what the Act should be used for. At that time when I was placed under the Act, the only options were hospitalisation and medication. And if we were going to look at a future where those things aren't mandated, mandatory, coerced, then we need to make sure we've got a whole lot more on the menu for people to choose from so that when we become unwell, we know exactly what it is that makes us feel safe loved, cared for, and back on the road to recovery. One change I would like to see is people being treated like people and not the conditions that they have been diagnosed as. Treating them with kindness and empathy, having a peer to walk alongside a whānau member under the Act can make a big difference in not only their experience within that moment, but for their mental health journey. Firstly, if I was placed under the Act in the future, I don't want it to be a surprise. I want it to be something that I choose because that is what enables me to get the help and the resources that I need at that moment of acuity. What it would feel like is walking into a space where I know I'm going to be cared for, that there are humans in there speaking to us as other humans, not as children, not as people who are naughty or people who act out or behave badly or don't know what they're doing or make bad choices, but human to human, peer to peer, peer, regardless of um, what role or position that person has in the hierarchy. In my moments of being most unwell, the things that made the biggest difference was the relationship I found with someone. I didn't even know what their job or their position was. It was someone who took the time to sit down have a cup of tea with me and ask me genuinely how I was and how that could help. Those are the things that I would like in our future system, whether or not it becomes an act. Um, I am really interested in models like Pōwhiri Pōtama or Dynamics of Whanaungatanga, um, which show ways that we can establish trust, build Whanaungatanga um, and uphold the mana of every individual. I would like to see the normalising of mental wellbeing and a move towards a system where physical and mental health are treated and weighted equally and equitably. I would really advocate for peer support roles to be well considered in terms of supporting people um, as they come under the Act. It's really important that people feel that they have someone in their corner who's advocating for them and who believes in their rights and who is there to support them along their journey um, at what is a, a really scary time. So in the future of a mental health system, I'd ideally like there not to be an act. And if there was an act, I'd like it to be like the VIP Act 
an act that's that's placed upon you in order for you to jump the queue, in order for you to get exactly what you need at the moment you need it without having to wait for it. An act that allows clinicians um, and therapists to be able to, to give you exactly what you need in that moment to get back on track as quickly as possible. An act that allows Fano and family and friends to get the support they need to be able to support you. That's what I would ideally like and that's the future I see. The team will be willing to walk alongside with you and make you feel normal of being there. And everyone you have a great access to therapy, credible educational resources and support groups for specific mental health diagnosis, including for final members that is run separately. And individually, we all will have a day filled with art and craft, music therapy, animal therapy, and outlet to express oneself. And it will be a place where we all can feel a warm humanistic approach that is filled with soul, where it also helps to fill out more than just managing the symptoms. I wish in those moments when I was most unwell and I was placed under an act or I was in hospital that my family and whānau were trusted, that they were spoken to with genuine care and respect. I wish that they were given the resources that they needed to understand what was going on for me and to understand what it is that they could do for help so that they didn't feel so hopeless themselves. I think what would really help in the future with the Mental Health Act is for uh, someone like me who is distressed to be able to have somebody to walk alongside me as I'm going through any kind of process. So somebody who's been through the system, somebody who understands and somebody who's able to navigate that system with me. A peer support worker is what I would like. Um, I think that should be entrenched in the law that I should have that level of support if I'm distressed. What do I wish I had access to I wish I was offered? I wish in those moments I and my family members were offered things as well as medication. Medication for me was something that was a crutch to, uh, that enabled me through the hardest moments, but I would have liked some other things to start working on, some talking therapy, some peer support, some nutritional therapies and supports, uh, some, some cultural support that would have been helpful in helping me make sense of the experiences that I was undergoing. When it comes to risk, the best person to tell you if they are a risk is the person themselves. Clinicians are under a lot of pressure to assume and manage risks. The more time they spend on that is the less time they can spend supporting the person. Uh, the new Alcohol and Drug Addiction Act, called the SACAT Act, has a new way of understanding how voluntary treatment orders can be used. If there are still compulsory treatment orders in the future, then this is only justified to be used with a small subgroup of the Mental Health Act population. Some of my peers haven't been supported to manage themselves and their daily living tasks. And so some might still need a legal treatment order to manage themselves and their affairs. But in my mind, this would look much more like the Triple PNR Act or an advanced directive rather than a compulsory treatment order. I don't see any place in our future uh, being an act or not an act that allows for coercion, seclusion or restraint. All of those things are harmful, make people more unwell and I think there are ways we can get through without them. I understand we've got a system and that's encased in uh, risk, but I think we need to instead focus on safety. Safety of us, safety of our whānau, safety of our clinicians that are under our care. I think we don't, we, we shouldn't break down the system or the clinicians 
uh, looking after us when something goes wrong. I think we need the time to develop a close and trusting relationship with the people who are helping care for us in those moments where we feel unable to be able to um, make good decisions for ourselves. There should also be a warning put out there that if there is compulsory component to a future mental health act, that it should only be used for people who can't manage themselves and their affairs. It must not be used to force people to take their medication or for people like me who just live with general mental health conditions. I do believe compulsory treatment orders um, possibly have their place, but um, I think this is really a once in a lifetime opportunity to create really positive change. And this isn't just going to impact individuals under the act, this is also going to impact and uphold the futures and protect the futures of other people affected by the act like Fano. And Uh, also, I think that um, I should be able to make uh, my own decisions as much as as possibly able to be, to be done. But um, in the event that I feel that I need support to help make my decisions, then I would like the ability to um, nominate someone that I trust from my whānau. In my case, that would be my partner. And he should be involved in sitting alongside me and supporting me to make decisions. Um, yeah, that's th those are just some of the things that I would like to see out of a future Mental Health Act. Kia ora. I would have liked to know about things like advanced directives, where you actually write down when you're well the things that you know you would like to be offered when you're unwell, that you know work for you and get you back on track. If I'd known that advanced directives existed back then, then I would have liked to know that those advanced directives were followed. This is one in a lifetime approach, an opportunity where we can really see the potentials of making a difference. So please submit your thinking and to really make a difference. Thank you.